on the busy streets of Coruscant, public transportation can be dangerous. Can you spare the change for fare? And what awaits you at your final stop? So we should uh, roll our force die. I got one. Oh, good. I got. I got one dark side. Yeah, I got two dark side. So there are three dark side on the table. Correct. Okie dokie. Do you uh, do you want to introduce or should I? Okay, well let me introduce myself. I my name is Doug Eberhart and I have played Lucky, uh, the clone trooper, and who is featured in the Coruscant Nights podcast and is also part of the. Um, is the main character of the Lucky Chronicles. Um, and I also played Sol Dixon in a recent episode. Uh, Sol Dixon was a kind of a detective who was working with Manus Orain, who was his, became his partner, and they solved a crime involving the Dims. Uh, but today I am going to be guest hosting this episode of Coruscant Nights, and your typical, your regular host, Mark Eberhardt, my brother, is going to be uh, playing the game instead of mastering the game. Hello, I'm Mark Eberhardt. You may know me from such podcasts as Coruscant Nights. This is Cricket the Podcat. You may know her from such podcasts as Coruscant Nights, where she plays Vectivus. Other than Coruscant Nights, I'm an illustrator. You can find my work at markeberhardt.com. And that's about it. Today I'll be playing TC44, Human Cyborg Relations. Um, it's been my dream to have a game starring TC44 because it's basically the last character that anyone would ever want to play. Um, and I think that, that that allows for lots of creative problem solving and hopefully entertaining problem solving that will, uh, that's yet to be seen, but uh, today we're going to find out. So TC44, um, I think, may be in the background of a single episode. So for those who are not uh, patrons on patreon.com slash Coruscant Nights, where they can listen to hours and hours of uh, Lucky the Clone, TC44 is a protocol droid that works at the clone barracks um, that is in our area of Coruscant. He is a silver protocol droid, um, and he gets to do fun stuff like uh, cleaning the barracks and uh, taking care of the all the trash that the, the clones produce. And every once in a while, he gets to um, translate if they've got uh, some sort of like prisoner that they don't understand. Once, one time, uh, TC-44 got to hold a blaster and pilot a ship. And uh, how did that make TC-44 feel? Oh, it was, it, it was marvelous. Oh, I loved it. I loved every second of it. <laughs> this is also a great excuse to force Mark to speak in this ridiculous TC-44 protocol droid accent, and uh, I'm very glad that I don't have to do it. <laughs> but good, good, you're doing a great job. Uh, the clones, um, here's here's one that you don't, you haven't heard yet. The, um, the clones tell him that he was there and uh, part of the action on um, that faithful day with his regiment and Debo Bend on Endor. But his memory's been wiped since, so he doesn't remember that at all. Wow. That's interesting. Why would they have wiped his memory? Oh, it's just standard procedure. Not very nice. It's the Republic. Alright. This is before the droid uh, liberation movement, I guess, which maybe has yet to happen in the Star Wars universe. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so should we get started? Yeah. Alright. Our, our journey today will begin in a lower level of Coruscant at the Clone HQ. 
Camera pans in on the clone HQ, and it looks like quite the battle has taken place here. Uh, scorch marks, laser blasts, um, riddle the front of the headquarters. Looks like some bombs have gone off. There are some windows broken at the headquarters. It doesn't look like it's doing too well, but uh, it looks like, you know, nothing's on fire. There's no smoke pouring out of it. This battle that took place here happened uh, maybe about a week ago. Inside, there are several clones cleaning, moving things around. Um, some of them have welding masks on. They're fixing doors, things like that. Um, there's probably about uh, a regiment of 10 clone trooper officers at this building. Um, they protect and serve in Coruscant in some of the most dangerous streets and alleys of the planet, and their recent altercation with the Rancors is behind them, and they are looking towards a, a, a new future uh, with a little less crime and uh, a, a little more hope for the galaxy. One, uh, aside from the 10 or so clone troopers, there is a protocol droid. Oh my. And what, what is the protocol droid up to in this headquarters? They won't let TC-44 near any sort of real work, like anything that he would want to do. He can't touch the blowtorch or anything like that. He's got a little dustpan, and he is um, there. He's, he's sweeping in the corners. He's, there's a lot of broken glass up in the front, so that's what he's taking care of, sweeping away. A... Hey, uh... A clone walks by carrying a very heavy, large box and uh, makes a side comment. So it may help you with that. Yeah, I got this covered. Go back to your sweep and it looks like you missed a spot, buddy. Very well. Sweep, sweep, sweep. <laughs> um, oh, God. You need to roll a sweeping check. <laughs> How well are you sweeping? I I sweep to the best of my ability. It is my duty to take care of these clones because they cannot take care of themselves. Well, uh, I think you're doing a fine job. I do the do the clones respect TC44 or uh do they value TC44's um service to the clones? TC44 knows that the clones value his experiences here. But he does not feel very well respected by the, the clones that are here right now. The only clone that he ever really connected with was Lucky the clone. Because Lucky gave him a blaster once. And that, that made him happy. Um, mm -hmm. uh, there's one clone that uh, walks into the room. And it sounds like he's chatting on, the, uh, on a comm link with somebody. Okay. And uh, he says, Really? Are you sure about that? I mean, I could just send one of my men. Right, I, I understand. I understand. It's just that... Are you, are you sure? I mean, I'm looking at him right now, and I, I... I... I'm a little concerned, to be honest. All right, all right. Hey, uh... TC44, is it right? Yes, sir. I, How may I be of service? I've got, I've got a call for you. And, uh... You know how to use one of these? Uh, uh, come, Link. Delightful. Thank you. TC-44 holds it up to his face. Um, like the front of his face. On the other <laughs> end of the comlink. Link. Hello? Hello? Uh, yeah. Can you hear oh, me? I, I can hear you. Is this, uh... It's just a TC-44... This is TC44, Human Cyborg Relations. You you work down at the uh at the Clone HQ, is that correct? That is correct, sir. My my name's Sol Dixon and uh I uh I um gotta tell you something. I I'm pleased to to let you know that you you won a special award. Oh, an award? Me? What award have I won? Well for for all for all of your all your years of service uh, with the clones and uh, and for your bravery for helping us take down those rancors. Do I get a medal? 
You sure do. <laughs> TC44 does a very small dance. The uh, clone who handed him the phone has uh, some kind of... Are they carbonite teeth? Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's clean-shaven, a uh, series of kind of dark gray metal teeth. He does kind of a side eye at TC44 and his dance. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, you know, and I know it's short notice, but the award ceremony, it's, uh, it's tonight act, to be honest. A ceremony? Oh, I do love ceremonies. Pomp and circumstance. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, it's, uh, it's actually, uh, it's gonna be in the conference hall at my, uh, office building. And where is your office building? Well, we're, we're up a couple floors from you. Uh, quite a few floors. If I, if I know where you are. Which I'm quite sure I do. If you would send the address to one of my superiors, I would love to come receive this award. Uh, well, thank you very much, TC44, and, uh, let's see, it's, it's, uh, it's still early right now, but I'll see you in, uh, few hours. Look forward to meeting you, Mr. Dixon. I'm gonna, why don't you hand me back over to your uh, supervisor? I got a couple more things to tell him. Yes, sir. TC44 hands the comlink back over to Teeth. Right. Yep. Yep. He's going, huh? But you told him? What did you, what did you tell him? Oh, no. Oh. oh all right. All right. Um, Teeth uh, kind of walks out of Earshot. He's on a computer. He seems to have a little uh, kind of a jump drive. He's uh, uploading some some files or something. Uh, TC44 kind of waddles over towards him just far enough that he's not in the way. All right. All right. I'm sending him up now. I better hope this works. Steve hangs up. All right. Uh, TC. Or do you prefer 44? TC is fine. Actually, I prefer TC 44. It is my proper designation, after all. Uh, well, all right. TC 44. Uh, I'd like you to upload... Take, take this drive. Upload the coordinates to the office. Uh, Saul's office. Um, there's some other files in there. I would appreciate it if you don't, uh, hand them out or look at them. Please deliver all this information to Sol Dixon when you get there. TC44 sort of pops the little cap off the tip of his right index finger and plugs the jump drive in. He's just going to download the information. All right, TC. Well, whenever uh, whenever you're ready, you can, you can just head on up there. No escort? I'm to go alone? You know, uh, Sol and I talked it over and we thought it might be might be best if you went on your own this today. And we're, we're all pretty busy, you see. I see. Well, excellent. It sounds like an adventure. T looks around. He calls over to one of the uh, clones in the room. What does the clone look like? I was thinking about asking you that. Pretty much looks like any other clone, except he... Uh, under under his armor, you can see that this, like, intricate pattern of lines sort of going up his neck. I think he actually has a uh, a sleeve of, of lines uh, down one side, one arm. He is talking privately with him for a second. The This clone, and what's this clone's name? Uh, his name's Ink. He gives him a very official-looking salute and walks off to the barracks of the uh, of the clone HQ. TC44 is ready to go. All right. So how is TC44 going to get uh, to Saul's office building? It shouldn't be too difficult um, just to get up there uh, with a mixture of walking and public transport. It sounds like quite the day out that TC44 is about to have. TC's day out. TC's day out. Is that the name of this episode? <laughs> that's what I was. That's what I was gunning for. TC44 makes his way down to or over to a some kind of bus stop. Yeah. What time of day is it? I think it's like noon, and 
this oh, ceremony really? is okay. Is that how, how do you? What time did you think it was? Well, it's Coruscant nights. Oh, I guess if it's nighttime by the end, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, it's it's noon. <laughs> okay, it's Coruscant noon. Uh, oh, that would be a pretty good title too. Um, no, I gotta wait for one with a showdown for Coruscant noon. Uh, that's true. So as TC forty four walks over to, uh, how about a, a train station? Okay. Um, yeah, that's great. That's great. He's going to go through the data to see where he has to go. And while he's in there, he's just going to go through all the data. Oh, great. I actually I actually didn't know if you would do that. Uh, do you need me to make any sort of check? Um, so the you pull up the directions. Mm -hmm. um, I have who knows what a protocol droid sees, but if you can see like a digital map in your mind's eye yeah um, yeah i think for the directions that makes sense it's it's a little bit far i'm gonna say taking public transportation it's gonna take you maybe two two and a half hours to get up there um okay. including wait time and it's public uh, transportation after all yeah i mean this is a big city that's that's mm -hmm. you know you try to go from one borough of New York to the other it might take you two hours. Two and a half hours is nothing. So you try and open the other file yeah. just because out of the curiosity of uh, the protocol for ATC44 and uh, it's you can't, it says uh, access denied. Okay. Um, can I make a computer's check to try and open it up? Yes. And I'm going to say it's going to be a for, for TC44, this is a normal, uh, normal difficulty. So average? Average, that's what I meant. Two? Yeah. So TC44 has an intellect of three, so I'm rolling three greens and two purples. Oh my, that was a difficult code to crack, but I'm in with two advantages. All right. You, you... My man, how do, what is how does how do windows open up? I guess in PC forty five or forty four's mind's eye. Let's treat the the file, this chunk of information, like a building. So in in TC's mind eye, he's he's like standing at this train station waiting for the the train to come in, and in his computer brain, um, there's like this big box, and he found the entrance, and he's walking in. Okay, it's a big box, and he's walking in. Yeah. And around him, there are, um, there's lots of text. A lot of mm -hmm. the text it has um, written notes on it. Some areas are kind of blacked out, uh, like government. Ooh, like redacted. Government. <laughs> That's the word. Um, and you also see a picture mm -hmm. of a uh, kind of a regal looking person and they are a senator. Hmm. Handsome for a man. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay. Is it a man? Uh, it is a man, but it's not a human man. Mm hmm It is a, uh, it is a Corrin, and hmm. their name is Shobo Graz. Shobo. Shobo Graz. Shobo Graz. <laughs> okay. Like a grawfish. Okay. Um, handsome for a Corrin man. And do you want to try and um, decipher any other info or like read any of this I stuff? I do. This, this info came from, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's from my, my clone troop. It could potentially help me be the best protocol droid in the service. So... I think the more I know, the better. All right. Um, so you inspect this data. The closer you, you need me to roll anymore, you 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 already unlocked it. You're just you're just spending like 15 minutes reading some of the info that's in okay. front of you. Yeah, I do have two advantages on that too. As you're looking through this stuff, there are actually some pictures of some trade federation. Um, representatives and delegates and senators 
and oh, how interesting. you see some kind of blurry, grainy photos of some battle droids and battle droid tanks. This data will incriminate incriminate um, Senator Shobo Graz for uh, crimes against the Republic. Interesting. I always feel bad for the battle droids. They don't have any choice in the matter. Um, TC-44 is not wrong. And the train pulls up and TC-44 gets on. Okay, so you are speeding through. Or attempts to get on. Do you have any? I mean, you have two dark side points. Two dark side, or three things, so. I'm going to say TC-44 gets on. Um, the train is pretty crowded this time of day. Um, a lot of people mm -hmm. are... Some people are finishing up work at noon. Some people are heading to lunch. Yeah. Some people are heading to meetings. Um, you're kind of in the middle of Coruscant, so it's not too too seedy. And yeah, where, where would you would you are you gonna sit? Or are you gonna stand? Oh, I'll stand. How polite of you. My joints are freshly oiled. We'll save the seats for people who really need them. Very very considerate of TC44. So the train's speeding along. And it's, it's, you know, it, it's kind of a, even though this is very, uh, they have lots of technology on Coruscant, the train is, uh, you know, it's a little old. The system that, you know, it works with is, it's not incredibly maintained. Yeah, it's not well maintained. Um, you know, it hits a little bump and you're going to bump, bump uh -huh. into a guy. Oh my, I do apologize, sir. Hey, watch it. These grav trains, you never know. Yeah, you never know. I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. What does this person look like? This person is a very large Gamorrean. Oh, oh dear. I, I pat him. What's he wearing? What is he, what's he like? He actually is dressed quite unlike a lot of the other people in this uh, car. He's got kind of like some old, worn-looking armor on. Oh, I was kind of hoping he was wearing like a big fluffy fur loincloth thing. Yeah. He's got some fur. With no shirt. <laughs> oh no. Okay. No, he's got some he's got some uh some fur, but he's got kind of like metal shoulder pads. Uh-huh. I give him a, a light tentative pat on his uh leather chest arm and say, I'm, I do apologize, sir. I will stand a bit further away from you this time. Did you just pat me? I'm I do apologize, sir. Hey, Mo. I don't pat him this time. Look at this guy. He just patted me. A week way, perks his eyes up. He's reading a romance novel that he found on the train. And, uh... It's got a, a Twi'lek and a Zabrak on the cover. Yeah, there's a, a wave kind of crashing behind them, and there's a lighthouse in the distance. Great. Perfect. He places the book down and gets up to also confront TC-44. Sirs, this train is clearly in need of maintenance, and I will speak with the authorities. I have connections, you know. We will never have an incident like this again. It's a, it's a pretty nice droid. What do you think, Mo? Um, the weak way nods. Yeah, not bad. Really hard to find one like this, just wandering around by itself. What did the owners think was going to happen? Yeah, they, they should know better than to let their droid wander around the, the trains. Hey, uh, how'd you like to come with us? Uh, are you trying to convince TC-44? Yeah, what's does TC-44 want to come with them? I would prefer not to. I do have a mission right now. Oh, no, no. You, Perhaps later. You're going to love it. There's there's lots of droids. Lots of droids to be your friends. I, I, I already have plenty of friends. The clones. Uh, no, no, yeah, no, no clones, no clones. We don't like the clones, and you shouldn't either. No, the, they are my best friends. My commander, they, we are like a group of brothers. No, no. They call me TC44, it's the best nickname. That's, that's not a nickname, buddy. They, that's just, that's just what they, they made that up, and they, they programmed you to want to follow them. No, no, that's that's no good. We got a we got a good thing going with our with our other droid friends, uh, and they'll be your friends. But I am off to receive an award. They're expecting me. All right, all right. Five minutes. We're just gonna take you. We're gonna show you for five minutes, and then uh, and then uh, we'll send you right back for your award. 
I would prefer not to go with you. Um, I do have a mission, and if I do not get these files to the RSF, I will be in trouble. Um, all right, all right, five minutes, like we said. Um, the train is pulling into the, uh, a next, the next stop, and the doors open, and they are going to... I'll, I'll flip... Can I, I'll, I guess I'll, I'm really moving the plot, so I'm going to flip a dark side and say that these okay. two guys um, grab TC-44 by both arms and start oh hoisting my. him out the door of the subway, or of the train. TC-44 is moving his legs like he's walking, but he's being carried. Okay. You two do not have to help me. I can. I am able to walk on my own. My servers have just been oiled. Uh, it'll be faster this way. We don't want you to miss your award, so this will be much faster. Uh, oh, thank you. Oh, no problem. It's our pleasure, really. I, I appreciate the assistance. They are going to walk him about a block. Are they still just sort of, like, carrying yeah, him? Yeah, they're carrying him. <laughs> like, he can't really walk away. No, cannot physically walk away. Okay, what, what is, where is, does it look like he's going? So they're still kind of in the middle of Coruscant, so it's not too ritzy yet. The buildings are getting a little closer, it's getting a little darker, uh -oh. and they're getting into an area that's not quite as well lit. Sirs, I do not like it here. If you would let me go, I would love to complete my mission. Uh, yeah, we're, you're, you're gonna have time to finish your mission. Don't, don't you worry. We're gonna take oh good, good care of you, Shiny. At this point, I think TC44 is gonna try and break out of their grip. Okay, so, what, so we use brawn? It would be in athletics, I think. Alright. So, it would be opposed to, like, their athletics versus my athletics? Okay. Let's see, let me just find their athletics. And athletics defaults to brawn. Right. Their brawn is three. Really? Ugh, okay. <laughs> Just a single threat. A oh single dear. Threat. Yeah. So, your threat is that these guys know you're trying to escape. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm what, struggling. What are you, what are you doing? What, what, we told you we I'm wanted to escape, obviously. We just want to show you something, okay? <laughs> I don't want to see it, okay? Uh, it's all right. It's I... all right. We're here. We're here. You come across a large stone building. Okay. It, it's stone. Uh, it's old. Yeah, it's 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 kind of fallen apart a little bit. Okay. There's just one steel door on the front, and it has a got one of those little sliding um, window, eye windows. Okay. Are we, is this, are we in the Undercity? I did not think we were coming this far down. Well, uh, we've got a lot of, you know, we've got friends in the Undercity, but, you know, we're we're not, we're not that low. Are we? Mo? Are we that low? Mo shrugs. Mo, give him the knock. Mo knocks on the door, and it is two short knocks. One long knock with a pause, followed by two more short knocks. The window slides open. You see some menacing looking eyes. The door opens. They gesture TC44 in. <laughs> oh dear. TC44 waddles in, because he has no other choice. Yeah, you don't really have a choice. What is this place like? Very uh, gross and dank. Uh-huh. It's just sort of bricks, there's a series of doors, there's flickering lights, and down the hall there seems to be, um, it, it might open up into a garage or something, it's mostly dark in the back, um, but right now you're just in, in a hallway with a few doors on uh, each side. And they're still forcing me forward? Yeah, um, you're being forced forward, and the, you can see the guy that opened the door. Yeah. Uh... The guy that opened the door, it's a, it's a Nikto, and okay. he's got kind of similar um, armor on, some fur. Uh, he's got some spikes on, actually, too. He, yeah. he, he looks kind of kind of scary. Um, all of these three dudes are uh, not, not too friendly looking. The Nikto says, uh, oh, nice find. That's, a, that's a one shiny droid. I haven't seen one like that in a while. I am a nice find, aren't I? You sure but I really are. need to go now, okay? 
<laughs> Listen, you all seem like nice people. Very nice people. In another life, I could see being best friends with all of you, but I really, truly must leave. Oh, can no. I try and charm them? Um, yeah, you can try and charm this Nikto. Okay. He seems he seems to like you. Um, I waddle up to him and put uh, one of my silvery hands on his shoulder and say, Listen, these two will not listen to anything that I say, but I really must go. I'm to receive an award tonight. I cannot be late. An award, huh? Yes, for bravery. You're... What did you do? How brave are you? Well, <laughs> two of my clone brothers, well, they took me on a mission. They gave me a blaster. I got to pilot a ship. I got to fire that blaster. I took care of prisoners. What is what is this guy's uh, what is this guy's discipline? His discipline is one. Okay, I'm, I'm trying to charm him. Mm -hmm. Do you want to uh, upgrade this check because I'm rolling two yellows and a green? Yeah, you're definitely gonna have a setback because every single droid that comes through these doors. Uh, I won't say every single droid, but a good portion of the dro droids that come through these doors. Uh, try and try and get out of whatever is about to happen <laughs> okay he's he's you're not the first one who tried to appeal to his uh appeal to his good nature all right so i've got two yellows a green a purple and a black in my hand right now uh one purple yeah because it's oh uh, because it, because his willpower is so bad <laughs> yep okay that seemed fine to you um yeah, I, I just don't, I just don't, I think that's a little too easy. <laughs> he's, he's not very smart, but he's not that dumb. He's not very smart, but he's not that dumb. Yeah, he's right in, he's, he's in the lower middle of that, uh, <laughs> that range. Um, can I, can I just, can, it, can I tell you that it's not going to be that easy and it should be an sure, average difficulty? Sure, sure. All right. I mean, I I'd love for you to get a triumph, but. I'm going to get a triumph. I got a success and an advantage. Wow. I'm so a you very sound... charming fellow. Wow. You, you sound really brave. <laughs> oh, I am. You would not believe it. And you and you used a gun before? I've, I know Protocol Droid knows how to use a gun. At least once. Here, here. Take my gun. Uh, oh, thank you. I uh, love it when you... people let me hold their blasters. Can you, uh... You see that bottle I was drinking way, way down at the end of the hall? Yes. I just want to see if you can hit it with those little droid hands. certainly try. Do it, what? please. <laughs> what kind of gun does this guy have? Um, it's a, uh, it is a very common looking blaster pistol. So it's a pistol, so it's range light? Yeah. And what's the range? Um, close, medium? It is medium. All right. So, what does the area that I'm look I'm shooting at look like? It is a relatively narrow hallway. Uh huh. Like I said, there were doors on uh, either side of the hallway. I'm gonna say that there's um, two sets of doors going down the hallway. At the end of the hallway is a desk where he was sitting when he heard the knock, and he had a bottle that he was drinking from on the table. Behind him, it gets kind of um, darker, and it seems to open up into a larger room. Okay, and I'm a little further down away from that table. What is there anything else on the table? Um, also on the table, there seems to be a a lockbox. Mm -hmm. There's a data pad, there's a trash can. It looks like there's a larger lockbox behind that is like kind of, almost like a chest, I guess. Okay. Okay. And, so I, yeah. Is that it? Yeah. So I failed to hit the bottle that was on the desk. Okay. But I got two advantages. So I hit that lockbox, the smaller one. Yeah. And I exclaim, oh dear, and I drop the gun and I start waddling towards it. I must clean this up. I'm so sorry. The lockbox explodes and um, paper credits uh, are fluttering down from the seal from the sky now. The room, uh, you shot a box full of uh, <laughs> 
money. I thought so. All right, so I waddle toward it, towards it, and I try to grab them out of the air and collect them. I'm, I do apologize. Uh, let me let me gather these up for you. I'm very good at cleaning. Um, the Gamorian hits uh, this Nikto on the back of the head. What the heck did you get my gun for? Now he's trying to steal our money. That's it. I'm sending him down the chute. <laughs> Mo, grab the money. So the Gamorian uh, is gonna. It's approaching TC44 quickly, uh, mm-hmm. uh, exclaiming, <laughs> "That's it! Down the chute with you." The weak way grabs the paper money out of my hands and starts collecting more of the money off the floor. Yeah. The chute. <laughs> but I just right. did shoot. If you give me another chance, I know I can hit it this time. Oh, you're done shooting for today, Shiny. Oh, dear. Picks up THC-44 and walks into the um, closest room to the table, uh, just to the left of the table. This room is almost pitch dark. It's only lit from the light, the flickering lights in the hallway. Uh-huh. In this room is a very large garbage chute. <laughs> Oh, you do not want to throw me in, in there. I'm a very nice droid. Yeah, I, 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 that may have worked on my buddy. He something. There's something wrong with him. Uh, that won't work on me. All right, here you go. And uh, he opens the chute and <laughs> slides TZ-44 in. Whoa, oh dear. <laughs> okay, TZ-44 is going to slide down about 30 feet into a pile into a pile of scrap this room that TC44 is now in is very very dark very Uh very quiet you can see a couple shimmering lights in the darkness would you like me to do a perception check sure what's the difficulty average so I'm rolling three greens and two purples it's it's just very dark in here. It's dark and it's very dusty. Okay. The dust is hanging in the air. So I'll take a setback for the darkness. The little lights uh, make little beams in the dust. Okay. TC44 failed to see anything, but I have an advantage. That advantage... I guess TC44 gets to his feet and starts walking towards those uh, those light beams. This is very interesting. You can't really see what they are. Um, as you get closer, you can see that they're moving a little bit. Oh, are they droids? Uh, you get a little closer, and... They did say there would be droids down here. Uh, you approach a droid that kind of has a sort of bug-like head, and you can't quite tell it's a droid yet, but you have an idea is this a fellow protocol droid so tc44 has an idea that this bug face thing is a droid it says oh you appear to be a fellow protocol droid much dirtier than me though the uh, the droid uh the <laughs> okay i'm sorry um the droid uh the droid has a voice like this i mean do you always uh talk to yourself like this you, you seem to seem to talk out loud a lot for a droid just you, you, don't, you don't have a companion or anything behind you, do you? No, it's just me. I, I, uh, yeah, I, I used to be a protocol droid. <laughs> well, what are you now? Now I'm, now I'm, well, uh, now I'm, now I'm just a, now I'm just a torso. I don't have any legs, actually. <laughs> oh dear, I did not even notice. Yeah. No, it's well, is this some way you would like to go? I could pick you up. I, I, I'm, I was a protocol droid, and I, I can tell you that you can't pick me up. Um, I certainly can try. Well, I'm glad one of us is optimistic. <laughs> I'm to receive an award today. Is that right? Congratulations. Now, how do I get out of here? Uh, well, that's a good question. I, uh, I don't know. People really only come, come down, uh, Sometimes they go out that door, but they, they don't really, they never come back. Sometimes so, yeah. parts of them, sometimes parts of them come back, um, but, but not the whole thing, usually. Uh, I'd like to go check out that door. Um, are you taking me with you? Um, 
It's not a very big room, is it? You'll still be right there. You do not seem like a very enthusiastic person, and I associate only with enthusiastic people. You know what? I'm pretty comfortable, to be honest. Go check out that door. (laughs) I waddle over towards the door and start tapping on it. Hello? Hello? There's uh, no no answer. Hello? I tap on it for about five minutes and say hello, and I get no answer. (laughs) Uh, no it's fine I prefer that you, I get no answer yeah you, you don't get any answer you're starting to annoy some, some of the <laughs> lights all of the lights in the room are now looking at you <laughs> these beams of light are, point, are pointed at PC44 hmm I turn around well it seems like I may make some friends today can I see any of these other people these other droids um, yeah, you're, you're close to some kind of astromech droid. Oh, hello, small one. What is your designation? It gives you some very low and slow beeps. <laughs> and what do those beeps translate to? I'm not feeling very well. <laughs> <laughs> that is a strange name. I will move on. Who else do I see? <laughs> uh, there is a medical droid and it looks to be trying to uh, fix another droid Mm -hmm. Um, but the other droid is completely un uh, it's not operating at all it looks the the other droid looks like it has been very badly damaged there are some um, parts of it It, it's kind of been sliced open Um, I think I would like to go and rather than tap on the door and say hello over and over again. I'm going to actually inspect the door. Okay. So the door is metal. Mm-hmm. It has a keypad on it. Okay. And that's about it. Um, there's a couple um, glowing buttons on the keypad. The keypad is about um, doorknob area, doorknob level. Okay. Um, TC44 knows that he won't be able to just crack, like, guess the code. But you know what? I want to try and access some old memories that have been partially wiped. Oh, man. I hope you could figure out a way to make this help you. Um, yeah. That's a. Uh, that's. That's. This is. TC44 might be like breaking the. Uh, the boundary between. Uh, he's going to pass the Turing test. <laughs> is that yeah, the right maybe. thing? Is that the uh, test that's I'm the one of? is that the one where it, they seem more human it's if, if you can pass as a human uh, as a robot then you I think pass the Turing test I hope I'm not misquoting that okay so how difficult would it be for TC to try and remember things that have been like fragmented and partially wiped from his memory I mean I think it should be hard probably yeah. So hard, hard is technically three purples. Should um, it be harder, harder than that? Let's say it's hard, but I, I'm gonna upgrade it. Can I upgrade those three to one red? Three purples and a red. Wait, 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 wait. So if I, if you flip a dark over to light, one of the purples turns to red. Okay, so it would be two. Oh yeah, two oh. purples, one red. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, so my normal computers is three greens. Um, I would like to flip one of my light side over to upgrade one of mine to a yellow. So I have two greens and a yellow. Mm -hmm. And then thinking, thinking back to my last computer's check, I got two advantages that I never used. Okay. Can I get, can I have a boost die that maybe something will come out of that file that has been uh, uploaded to me? Yeah. I mean, I think that you, you used that, that successful check. You, you, was something you weren't supposed to do in the first place. Yeah. So I think that you get a boost for for independent thought. <laughs> okay. Sounds great. All right. That's pretty good. I got two successes and four advantages. Two success and four advantages. Yeah. Wow. That was a good so, roll. So TC44 scours his memory and both of the 
Okay, both of the successes were because of his check earlier. And bits and pieces of this new data that he's just acquired have sort of triggered uh, memories of fighting alongside the clones in a battle that they should really should not have won, where it was just he and Debo Bend, the Jedi Master, along with maybe at the most 50 clones against a whole regiment of battle droids. And he was like, he, so he's like remembering the battle droid tactics and he's remembering the clone tactics. And, and how's he going to get this door open? <laughs> oh no. Um, so he, he remembered he, he's, he broke, he found like, uh, hidden data that still remained in his brain. He got his memory back. He got his memories back, yeah. And now he... he uh, Man, I feel like you should... Okay. Can TC-44... No, I got, I got something. I was, okay, I'll just let you go. TC-44 looks at this control panel and he, with his metal hand flat, karate chops it. Thanks for listening to another episode of Coruscant Nights. Thanks to Doug for GMing on these episodes. You can find Doug's art at voidboy.art. Our music is by Mark Eberhardt. You can find us on social media at Coruscant Night on Twitter, or you can email us at CoruscantNightsPod at gmail.com. Love the podcast and want to show your support? You can leave us a review on your favorite podcatcher. You can buy us a coffee at ko-fi.com slash Nights, or you can visit us on Patreon. Check it out at patreon.com slash Nights. I want to give a big shout out to all of our patrons. Thanks, AJ, Sarah, David, Doug, Ben, Adam, Halo, Heather, Mr. T, Reese, Seppi, Steve, Tony, and Mikey. You're all awesome. We appreciate you. And last but not least, it's time to announce the winners of our latest giveaway. Mr. T and Halo will each be taking home a game and a pin from Fight in a Box Games. Thank you to everyone who entered. We'll be doing another one of these in a couple months. Congratulations, you two.